Hi, I'm Sven Venema and I'll be talking about capturing dynamic content using digital ink. So the problem that I had was that I have two distinct groups of students. There are students who attend the lectures in person and in the past that's what my delivery has been geared towards. And there are students who review the lectures at a later date and that's for a variety of reasons. So for example, they can't attend based on work or family commitments. They may actually already attend the lectures but they just want to review the lectures at a, a later time. And in the past, those students have not been as well catered for. So how do I ensure that, that I meet the, the needs of both groups? So what I already do that uh, works for students who attend lectures. So I make the lecture as interactive as possible. I ask lots of follow-up questions. I invite students to ask for more detail when they don't understand something. And to support that, I use a lot of diagrams and worked examples on the whiteboard. And so how do I know that works for the in-person students? Well, I get a lot of unsolicited student feedback and I get highly ranked teaching and course evaluations. There's a sample comment there that says, I believe I learnt better not through the slides, but by the lecture physically drawing diagrams on the board and explain as he goes. So the approach that I use for students who attend the lectures does not work as well for students who cannot attend the lectures and students who want to review the lectures at a later date. And that can be quite a large number of students. The reason it doesn't work so well is that for my lectures, the bulk of what students consider to be the valuable content is on the whiteboard. So any recording that does not include this has questionable value. So what are my options if I want to record the lecture successfully? I can use a lecture capture system, and so that's not always available, that, that may be changing uh, in the future. I can use PowerPoint, and that's a little bit inflexible in terms of it's not really dynamically adaptable on the fly. It's also a lot of work to develop um, dynamic PowerPoint slides. I can use the visualizer, which is pretty good, but it's not always available, and it's also a little bit fiddly, and sometimes my hand gets in the way in terms of when I'm drawing. Another alternative is to use video recordings, um, so I can capture what I write on the whiteboard, but that's typically expensive, slow, and it needs an editing process. So the innovation that I looked at was to use technology to el electronically capture the dynamic content, and it's a little bit more flexible than the whiteboard. And so the kind of technology options that I could use would be a touch tablet with a pen, an iPad or another tablet with a stylus, or a Microsoft Surface type uh, processor with a stylus. How hard is that to use? Well, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It doesn't work exactly the same as a mouse. The projector resolution may limit the amount of space to write in. So if I'm using a touchpad, it also requires some extra space on the lectern. That's not the case with, say, the iPad, for example. What's it suitable for? Well, it's suitable for mathematical content, process diagrams, so working things out. It's not really suitable for writing large chunks of text or for my programming courses where I'd like to be able to turn the, the things that I write into code that I can execute. and It doesn't work so well with handwriting. I've successfully used the tablet to deliver a worked example in a lecture only two days after I received that tablet. So it was pretty easy to use. And then I successfully delivered a full two hour lecture four weeks after receiving the tablet, which is again is an indication that it's fairly easy to use, although it does take a little bit of lead time to start using it effectively. So now we'll have a, a quick look at a short demonstration using the touch tablet. So this is a demonstration using digital ink and I'll be using a touch tablet with a stylus. It's connected to a laptop and what you're seeing on the left is the screen of the laptop and that can be projected to students in the lecture theatre. It can also be recorded so students can review the recording later on. And basically what they see on that screen um, is basically what I'm writing with my, my stylus. So don't worry about the example in terms of the, the maths. What we're doing is we're going to do arbitrary division in binary. Um, and so there's a lot of writing that I'm going to be doing to make this example flow. So the first thing I would do is, well, in binary I would have to convert the value 26 into binary. I've done that. And you'll notice I've drawn some boxes on the screen before I started this example to sort of let me uh, orient myself in terms of where I'm going to write certain numbers and also for the students to work out what's going on. So the next step would be to convert the 4 to binary and then I would write out the answer. The answer will be 6 with the remainder of 2. And again, don't worry too much about the maths. Now that I've gone through an example um, showing the, the question and the answer, now is the time for the worked example. So now I'll go in through in more detail and show how to compute the answer. And this is where the touch tablet really comes into its own. You can see that I have a lot of flexibility in terms of what I write and where I write it. And I can, as long as I can write it, I can generate an example that will be useful to the students. And so finally, I have here an answer. And I'm just going to change 
the pen color, just to show you, this is the answer, that's the answer, and this is the remainder, and there's the remainder. I can also do things like undo, redo. You've seen me change the pen color. Um, I could insert pictures, and so it's a very flexible environment um, to create worked examples. The nice thing is if you record this, students can see the worked example as it's being created, they can pause, they can rewind, as opposed to just seeing a, a statically generated final example. It's difficult to see how the parts were, were created. So the question then is, does it work? So to test that, I took a survey of students after implementing this, um, this technology the first time. So the response was overwhelmingly positive, and the majority of the 31 students who were surveyed specifically mentioned that handwritten content that was captured using the tablet as being the most useful part of the lecture recording. So using Digital Ink has made a positive contribution to my teaching practice and it's been really well received by students. So I invite you to investigate and experiment with Digital Ink to see if it's something that's useful to you and your teaching.